Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X Research and Professional Physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled, Planet X, Gravity is a Special Connection of Varying Strength. Now in article 153 entitled Planet X, Escape Velocity and Gravity, I show that the Planet X object known as 2007 uh, stellar core, which traversed the Sun in the Sun's corona, did not interact with the Sun as would be expected according to accepted gravitational theory. The object moved at a speed, uh, which was 39 kilometers per second, which was much lower than the sun's escape velocity, which is 616 kilometers per second from its surface. Whilst um, if, it, if we determine it from the outer edge of the sun's inner corona, it would be 503 kilometers per second, still way above the speed at which the object was moving during its traversing, which we can see here. So what does this mean? Uh, what is gravity in the light of this observation? Well, gravity is defined as an attractive force which causes matter to attract other matter. The stronger the concentration of matter, the stronger should that attraction be. Now, the 2007 stellar core approached the Sun and therefore the Sun must have exerted an attractive force on it. However, the gravitational force exerted by the Sun on it was extremely weak and much weaker than what is to be expected from gra gravitational theory, as demonstrated by the fact that the object was moving much slower than the Sun's escape velocity. We also know that these objects interact with the Sun via magnetic field connection, which allows them to draw plasma from the Sun's chromosphere, as detailed in Article 134, entitled Planet X Creates a Gash in the Sun. This occurs when some of the stellar cores remain over a particular position on the Sun for many hours. The connection often looks like roots and have to be formed by plasma particles spiraling along magnetic field lines. However, the 2007 stellar core did not do that. It just moved smoothly across the surface of the Sun, obviously absorbing a form of energy which has a direct relationship to light emission, as detailed in Article 152, Planet X, Energy Transfer and Light Emission. Thus, this object moved like a typical object would under the action of gravity. And this allows us to place an upper limit on the gravitational attraction between the two objects, and also to study the nature of this attractive force. Now, the fact that the gravitational attraction was weaker seems to suggest that the strength of the gravitational interaction can vary. And uh, there is no question that all planets in the solar system interact with each other as if gravity is an attractive force of constant strength in the solar system. Also, all the planets have orbits which attribute to the Sun a mass of 1.98 times 10 to the 30 kilograms, whilst the 2007 stellar core interacted with the Sun as if the Sun had a maximum effective mass, which was no greater than 0.6% of that value. And thus the Sun seemed to have a maximum mass equivalent to 6.3 times that of Jupiter. Now, uh, that is extremely low because the Sun is supposed to be 1,000 times more massive than Jupiter. Now, the gravitational potential energy gener generated by two objects of mass, little m and uh, capital M, at a distance r apart, is given by this equation, u equals minus g, uh, capital G, capital M, little m, over r, which is the gravitational constant, and this constant determines the strength of the gravitational interaction, which means uh, that g, um, the weaker uh, interaction between the Sun and the 2007 stellar core, can be explained by a much uh, smaller g than the one that um, is active uh, in the solar system or that we can use in the gravitational interaction for solar system objects. Now we know that equation 1 is a good model for the gravitational attraction for solar system objects because it, it can be used to correctly compute orbits for planets 
orbiting the sun, for moons orbiting planets, and for spacecraft sent out from Earth. Now, after seeing that stellar cores make magnetic connections with the sun and seeing the sun's loss of light emission, which can be explained if the sun is electrical in nature, I deduced that the main interaction in the universe must be electrical in nature. However, electrical fields cannot explain the orbits of the planets in the solar system and therefore the attractive force, which we call gravity. And the reason for that is um, that electrical field signals travel at the speed of light, but gravity signals seem to be instantaneous. So they seem to travel at zero speed. In other words, when you create an electric field change by, for example, closing an electrical circuit, such as switching on the light in a room, which you do by flicking a switch, that signal travels at the speed of light. And thus the light switches on after the time it takes for the signal to get to the light bulb. So there's a delay between you flicking the switch and the light and the light actually turning on. But in the case of gravity, the Earth does not orbit the Sun with a delay. So the Earth does not orbit the Sun according to where we would see it would be because it takes light eight minutes to travel from the Sun to the Earth. Uh, so, but the Earth tr um, orbits the sun according to where it is right now, not according to where it was eight minutes ago. And the orbits, um, so the Earth orbits the sun according to where it is now. And since all the planets are at different distances from the sun, if they were to orbit the sun according to a delay uh, due to gravity, or in this case, if we are saying that gravity is electrical, it must be the speed of light, then they would see, they would be orbiting the sun uh, according to where it seemed to be with a delay. So they would all be orbiting the sun uh, at different centers and there would be chaos in the solar system. So this means that um, gravity cannot be electrical in nature because obviously the planets all orbit the sun according to where it is right now. There's no delay um, in the interaction. Now the electrical interaction is still much stronger than the gravitational interaction and must therefore play a huge part in all that takes place in the universe. Thus phenomena like the behavior of asteroids and comets, especially when they develop tails like we see this comet here, can be explained by the electrical interaction and so can earthquake and weather activity on Earth. However, the force which holds the planets in their orbits around the sun cannot. So the gravitational interaction has to be a separate interaction from the electrical interaction. And uh, the fact that gravity signaling, signaling is instantaneous is um, actually the most likely reason why Einstein came up with his theory of general relativity in which gravity is viewed as due to the curvature of space. And this is what we see here. Uh, we see a, a massive object, in this case the Earth, creating a curvature uh, which increases as you move towards the center of the object. And this is a two-dimensional representation of what actually happens in three dimensions. So it would seem that objects coming out here from space would start falling towards the Earth, but it would, they would follow these curved paths because of the curvature of space. And uh, they may then uh, spiral inwards and collide with the Earth that way. But uh, this, um, thus this would cause uh, objects to follow these curved paths, which we know they do. However, um, um, well, he came up with it because space does not need to communicate with itself. So, so this would um, be instantaneous always. Uh, objects will just sense the curvature of that space around it. There would be any need for delay. Um, so it would be instantaneous. However, in his view, space was empty. It was not filled with aether particles, like I have started saying it seems to be. 
it. Um, so there was a problem with um, giving it a, a curvature, a property called curvature. Um, in other words, describing a property called curvature to space. And this, uh, this problem arises because, as we can see here, if we have two spacecraft following one of these uh, curved paths, and um, they're both following the same orbit, one after the other, if we then were to stretch a cable between the two spacecraft, this cable would be able to be stretched into a straight line. They, they, they wouldn't, this cable would not follow the curved path of the orbit. And this shows that curvature is not actually something which you can ascribe to space. Um, space is still um, flat, it's not curved, because we can stretch um, the cable between the two objects. So uh, this means that Einstein's theory of relativity uh, cannot use a property of space called curvature to describe gravity. However, Einstein may have been correct about it being related to space itself, um, because as I, as I mentioned, it would solve the instantaneous signaling problem. But as I detailed in Article 135, Space and the Expanding Earth, the fact that the Earth seems to be expanding and the fact that galaxies give birth to galaxies, which means that matter is being created from within regions where matter is concentrated, suggests that space is filled with particles called atherons and that concentrations of matter transform atheron energy into matter, more, more matter, and also other fields associated with matter and light, like electric and magnetic fields. Thus, the attractive force between matter, which we call gravity, must also be due to space being made out of atherons. But because it is instantaneous, it must have a closer connection with the aether itself. In other words, the interaction must be between aether particles rather than through matter, which transforms aether energy into fields. Normal matter cannot communicate instantaneously, but space must be permanently connected with every other point in space. So aether particles, because they make up space, must be permanently and therefore instantaneously connected to each other. Uh, thus, aether space can explain the instantaneous signaling associated with gravity, but the strength of the gravitational attraction between the Sun and the stellar core was weaker than expected, which can be described by a smaller gravitational constant used in this equation. So instead of the G, we have GSC, SC stands for stellar core, uh, which would be much weaker than uh, the G that is used between uh, solar system objects. In this case, G would have a value which is at most 0.6% of the value of G. Now, since the stellar cores were able to enter the solar system without disrupting the orbits of the planets, they have weaker gravitational interaction with all objects in the solar system, not just the Sun. This is therefore an indication that they make weak gravitational connections with all objects. Thus, the gravitational attraction is not about two objects interacting with each generating a gravitational field according to how they are able to transform aether energy into a field. The gravitational interaction is about a connection between two objects. It must be a spatial connection. And the strength of the connection is determined by the object which makes the weakest connection. This also suggests two levels of interaction in the universe. The level at which we can observe phenomena, or which we can say visible universe, or universe where we see these interactions like fields and light and matter and another level underlying that the atheron uh, space level from which observed interactions manifest through energy transformations so the only way we can see that there's an ava space is that there is a transformation which transforms aether energy 
into other forms of energy which gives rise to fields and matter in a universe where we see these interactions, where we live. One of those interactions, the gravitational, seems to be due to a connection which is made at the lower of eighth level. And in this diagram, this is explained. So we have concentrations of matter in the normal universe, which we are used to, which we see these interactions and matter in. And these concentrations of matter um, have energy transformations through which um, these fields then are generated and they emanate out from the object and they travel at a, certain, a constant speed, such as the electric field where it travels outwards from the object at the speed of light. And then we could uh, think of other objects being within the field of one of the primary objects. So we can see uh, planet Earth within the magnetic field of the sun. Um, but the gravitational interaction is different. It occurs at a lower level and it's actually a connection between the sun or point somewhere in the center of the sun and another object. And this connection is made through Aetheron space itself. It doesn't occur in the interactive uh, space that we live in and are used to seeing. And so this interaction is determined by the two points or the Aetherons um, that are at the two points. And the strength of the interaction therefore G between solar system objects, but when the interaction is between a solar system object, the sun, or a planet and a stellar core, the interaction is weaker. It's still a spatial connection um, in aether space or through aether particles, um, but because this stellar core can only produce this weaker uh, connection, uh, the connection between it and the sun and between it and a solar system planet is weaker and that is represented by the GSC. Now stellar cores are old stars which have reduced ability to generate magnetic fields and these many magnetic fields as I've explained are generated through an aether energy transformation. And uh, since the gravitational interaction is also associated to aether space, it is likely that they make weaker spatial connections as they age, thus explaining why old stars, or in other words, stellar cores, would make weaker gravitational connections with other objects. This suggests that stars become gravitationally weaker as they age. This also suggests that perhaps everything associated with a star declines during its aging process due to a reduced concentration of aether particles associated with the matter that its core is made of. In conclusion, gravity seems to arise as a result of space being filled with aetherons, which communicate instantaneously. The presence of stellar cores in the solar system has revealed that the strength of the gravitational interaction, as determined by the gravitational constant g, is not constant. The gravitational interaction can be determined uh, or can be described as a spatial connection between two objects and if a stellar core is one of the connecting objects the connection will be weaker resulting in a weaker gravitational constant g this is dr claudia albers planet x physicist thank you